Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? How many similar headlines have you seen? AI drew something there and drew it better than Da Vinci. Oh no, AI will dump all the designers and artists in the trash, and after that, maybe, enslave us all. Are neural networks being hyped the way NFTs once were, or are we on the verge of a revolution in the art? Does an AI deserve to be called an artist? What exactly do we consider a masterpiece? Let's begin. If you would like to see more videos about art on this channel, be sure to give us a like and tell us which other topic you want to learn about next. Look at these. Do they look like art to you? No, no. I'm not rushing you. Take your time. Tough nut, isn't it? So how about this? Oh, this one at least has some resemblance to, um, dunno, art? And now take a look at this. Now we are getting somewhere. Yep, it is a decent painting, isn't it? Those saturated colors, the composition of things. I think this is definitely art. Probably. I hope you are beginning to see the root of the problem. The question goes something like this. How can we tell the difference between art and junk if we don't even know what art is? Of course, we have a bunch of strict definitions of art. Although we have a strict definition of art, we still debate, as we pretty much have throughout all of history, what art really is. Okay, here is a final test for you. Pick one that is created by the AI. Okay, what you see here is a work by an English painter and sound artist Ivan Seal, who specializes in surreal and abstract works centered around concepts of memory and the creation of imagined objects. Doesn't it somehow sound familiar to you? Don't hesitate to learn more about his works. Worth it, believe me. And here we see Portrait of Edmund de Bellamy. Who created it? Also people. An art group called Obvious, obviously. But here is a trick. This painting, or should I say artwork, was generated using a machine-learned algorithm. So what, you may ask? I see no difference in this abstract gibberish. Why do I care anyway? And if I tell you that this was sold for 400 grand, money, 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 money. Now we are talking, but why is it different this time? Does art become art only when we recognize its value? Can art be called that without human attention? And most importantly, can art only be created by man? Intuition says yes. I mean, look at these. Oh, last one is my favorite. Sorry. If AI art can give us positive emotional feedback or any emotional feedback, does it count as legitimate art? A lot of people today may say yes. No, really. Just look at your newsfeed. It is literally swarming with references to neural networks, AI, and their impact on media, advertising, and the internet itself. This picture that we showed you before actually became a nightmare for the majority of professional painters. In September 2022, Colorado State Fair's annual art competition gave out prizes in all the usual categories. Painting, quilting, sculpture, etc. But there was one artist who decided not to touch the canvas at all. Jason M. Allen made a tricky move and generated an image in mid-journey. And what's more, he earned himself one of the nominations. The effect on the other artists was terrifying. They were furious. Why would anyone pay for art, they wonder, when they could generate it themselves? Allen's reaction was like, I'm not going to apologize for it. I won, and I didn't break any rules. And it's true. At the time, the contest did not include any restrictions on the use of AI. Allen was partly right. Should we blame him? Today, AI offers plenty of tools and techniques that can enhance an artist's creativity. From style transfer algorithms to generative adversarial networks, artists can experiment with different styles that definitely push the boundaries of their imaginations. Take a look at some sketches from Don Allen Stevenson III, a popular metaverse creator. 
Using machine-learned algorithms, people like him can create more realistic and detailed animations from facial expressions to body movements. In the given example, he uses video footage and input images generated by Midjourney to create artistic AI-generated animated videos. So yeah, consider AI as a digital assistant, providing real-time feedback and suggestions to improve artistic skills, because now AI can analyze and understand an artist's style, allowing for the creation of art that resembles their unique aesthetic. But getting the desired image from AI still requires time and artistic skill. And a lot of artists agreed that relying solely on AI inhibits artistic growth and development, mostly because practice and learning from mistakes are crucial for artistic skill, or really, for any skill. Additionally, there are practical and ethical controversies with AI art. Can you answer this? Who owns the rights to images created by AI? Would they belong to the person who created a prompt? Or a company that created specific AI technology? To an algorithm itself? Copyright issues can hinder commercial sales, as AI often utilizes unlicensed images. Art critic Jerry Saltz said that AI produces poor quality art, or as he put it, this is pretty crapola il illustration. Whatever the hell it means, the main point is that most AI art lacks real imagination and creativity. And the old man has his point because any AI can only combine existing data, but never create something new, as people do. And this is a crucial point. Any computer model works on strict, rational, direct logic. The human brain, on the other hand, is irrational, diverse, and a non-trivial problem solver. AI uses existing templates, but humans create templates. Now think about this. When the world is flooded with content created by artificial intelligence, will everyone be happy with it? Of course not. And that means that AI-generated art will very quickly become low-quality content, like cheap factory jeans made for $2. At the same time, content created by a real person will become incredibly valuable as something artisanal, natural, if you will. And our world will hang in this fragile balance between the abundance of artificial and original content for some time in the near future. So what now? Should I quit my junior designer job today and really make my mom upset just because some overpowered supermind computer was better than me? After all, computers will eventually reach their limits due to physical limitations. As electronic devices get smaller and more powerful, the potential for AI gets bigger. That's because Moore's Law, named after Intel co-founder Gordon Moore, states that the number of transistors on a microchip will double approximately every two years. In turn, this means that AI applications can be built into ever smaller devices, making them more accessible and affordable. However, there are signs that it may be slowing down in years to come. Only then will it really become clear how far the bags full of leather and bones which we call humans will be able to surpass the incomprehensibly complex concepts of artificial intelligence. So what do you think? Will AI fully replace traditional art? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and Instagram for your regular dose of culture from Curious Muse. Also check out our website CuriousMuse.org where you can find free online courses, downloads, and more great stuff for the culturally curious. And see you next time. P.S. This video was not made by AI, or was it?